The integrated rate equation for a first order reaction, equation 9.6, is written in three alternative ways in box 9.1. These equations, 9.6a, b and c, tell you three important characteristics of first order reactions. Equation 9.6a is useful because a plot of log of the concentration of A against time is a straight line, y equals mx plus c, and the gradient of the line is minus k, where k is the rate constant of the reaction. Equation 9.6c takes the form of an exponential decay, y equals e to the power minus x. If you plot the concentration of A at different times during the reaction, you obtain an exponential decay curve, the red curve, in figure 9.13. From equation 9.6b, you can work out a value for the half-life of the reaction, t a half. This is the time it takes for the concentration of A to fall to half its initial value. That is the concentration of A at time t equals its initial value A0 over 2. If you substitute this expression for AT into equation 9.6b, you get log concentration of A at time t, which is now the initial concentration of A over 2 times the initial concentration, and that equals minus kt, which is now t a half. The initial concentrations of A cancel out, which leaves you with log 1 over 2, which is the same as minus log 2. So you can now say that kt a half equals log 2, so that the half-life is log 2 over k. The important thing to notice about this expression is that the value of the half-life is a constant. It doesn't involve the initial concentration of A and is constant throughout the reaction. This is always the case for a first-order reaction, but not for reactions of other orders, so it's a useful diagnostic test. You can find values of the half-life from the plot of the concentration of A against time. Suppose the concentration of A falls from its initial value, A0, to half this value. Draw a horizontal line from the value at A0 over 2 to meet the curve at a point x. Then drop a vertical line down from x to intersect with the x-axis and measure the time taken t a half. You can obtain a second value for t a half by repeating this process to find the time for the concentration to fall by half again from A0 over 2 to A0 over 4 and measure a second value of t a half. And obtain a third value by finding the time for the concentration to fall by half again from A0 over 4 to A0 over 8 and so on. For a first order reaction, these values of t a half will all be the same within experimental error. You can use half-lives obtained in this way to decide whether a reaction is first order, and since t a half equals log 2 over k, you can use the half-life to obtain a value for the rate constant k for the reaction.